Hey, it's Kevin DeWitch here and welcome back to the Recording in a Home Music Studio course. In this video, we're going to talk about recording electric guitar. So recording electric guitar, this is obviously one of my favorite parts because that is my main instrument that I play. Now, there is many ways to record electric guitar, unfortunately, as there always is with every one of these instruments we're gonna talk about. So the main ones are, you can take your electric guitar and plug it directly into your audio interface as a direct in, and then you can use amp simulators within your software or anything like that that's going to give you your amp sound. Uh, if you want a really clean guitar, you can obviously keep it as a direct in only. The other options we have is our standard amplifier with a speaker and a microphone in front of it. Now, we also have another option that has been available for a while now, but is obviously becoming more and more common, which is using a, an effects unit that has amplifiers in them. So in my case here, I have a Kemper effects unit. It has amp sounds in it. That is its primary purpose, and I will be using that. But I'm going to be using it in a couple of different ways. One is, it can pass a direct out as well. So I will be recording a direct in of my electric guitar, and hopefully I will not be using it. Unlike acoustic, where it can sound good to blend it in with your song, I don't like the sound of a direct in electric guitar. It's just too raw, it's not natural, and that it's just not what I want. But what it is good for, it's good for a backup. So if I eventually get to the mixing stage and for some reason or another, my amp recordings with a microphone or my effects unit recordings are just not sounding right. The amp I picked is not the right one. Something like that's just not quite right. But the actual take and the recorded playing is right. I can take that direct in and I can then duplicate it if I want. I can apply amp simulators to it after the fact to get the actual right sound that I want. Now again, hopefully I won't need to do that, but it is a great backup. I can also take it even more complicated and take that direct in and feed it back out and back into my Kemper and reamp it, right? And you can do the same process with a real amp if you so choose. You just need a special box that can allow you to pass audio out and reamp it back through your amp and record it again. So if you just want to change the sound, but you love your amp and you want it, then check out processes of reamping. We're not going to really cover it in this course, but it is a, a, a topic that we can discuss potentially in other videos further down the line if everybody wants to know about it. Now, in my case here with a audio effects unit, I can have multiple amps. I can have totally different amps for different styles, whatever else, but I can also blend together. So I can simulate a uh, Mesa Boogie, for instance. Let's say I'm doing a metal song. I might have a, a Mesa Boogie and I'll do a pass on a Mesa Boogie, right? And record that take. Then I might do a take on a Diesel or a Marshall or uh, an EVH5150, whatever you want. If you have that sound in your audio effects unit, then you can obviously record those takes. And then you have the option to blend any one of those together with another one. It allows you to create your stereo effect. As I said in the acoustic guitar one, with the stereo style effect, we want to be recording multiple passes with different sounds to get a nice thick sound and give us a natural stereo effect as, as opposed to doing one recording, trying to duplicate it and trying to use delay tactics and f weird things to get it to become stereo. It just doesn't sound as good as you actually recording different takes and creating slight variances in your sound, right? They could be massive variances as well. Like, as I said, you could record with one amp and then record with another amp, or it could just be as simple as you record one with uh, a fair bit of distortion, you record one a bit cleaner. Or just with a different EQ, you have one with the mids rolled out, you have one with the mids put in. And that was gonna give you a good combination to blend to get the best sound that you want. 
and also get that stereo effect. So again, as with all the other acoustic instruments, electric guitar, no different. It's not really acoustic, but we still want nice new strings on them. Put new strings on, stretch them out, tune them up, make sure they're all good to go. Obviously have spare strings in case you break some because you don't want to lose that inspiration totally by having to wait days to get a new pack of strings in or anything like that. But have your guitar set up nicely, playing nicely. The better it plays, the better you are going to play and the more relaxed you're going to be about the process because recording can be stressful enough as it is. You don't want to be also fighting your guitar. You want to be comfortable playing because as I said, recording can be stressful enough as it is and puts a lot of pressure on you. So the more relaxed you are with your actual playing, the more that stress of recording will not impact your playing ability. Now, again, as with everything else, tune up all the time. Tune up before you hit record, every single time you hit record. We want all our instruments to be in tune all the time, or as much as we can. So constantly tune your guitar. So with the direct in, we obviously take a cable straight from our guitar. We plug it into our audio interface. We set up our track, set our input to it, and we're going to get some sound hopefully and start recording. Now, in my case here where it's a backup, I'm obviously gonna have it muted. It's just sitting there in the background recording. I'm not listening to it. If you are using it with an amp simulator, you obviously need to get your amp simulator loaded onto your track. You need to set your buffer size to a level that is going to reduce the latency enough, but still allow your PC to perform well and record without errors. Now with our audio effects unit, it is a similar sort of approach in that we're going to plug our guitar into our audio effects unit. That audio effects unit then is going to have outputs on it, whether that be a mono output or a stereo output that we are going to plug into our audio interface and feed an analog signal out. Right, no microphones involved. I'm assuming that your audio effects unit is going to be simulating microphones and speakers within its sound for you. So we're going to plug that into our audio interface. We are going to then obviously load up some tracks, whether that be multiple tracks or one stereo, one mono, whatever it is, depending on your unit. We're going to make sure that we're getting sound in and we're going to hit record and going to start playing. Obviously you want to dial in the amp sound that you are looking for and all that sort of stuff. So with our amp cabinet or speaker cabinet style recording, we are obviously talking about now doing a microphone. And this is very similar to the approach that we talked about with the bass guitar and an amp, right? If you have a unit that has multiple speakers, you're going to want to do test recordings on each one of those speakers to find the best sounding one for your ears. Then you are going to decide what microphone you want to use. Again, most common, dynamic, Shure SM57, very common, right? You don't have to use that microphone. Please don't take that as me saying you must use that microphone. Some people love the microphone, some people hate the microphone, right? but it is very common in recording studios to use it and it's not that expensive. You can use a condenser microphone if you want. You can have room mics, you can have, there is so many options here, right? So we've got some pictures here that shows that obviously not only, uh, we, we're talking about now the placement of the microphone, right? Again, same concept with the bass. If the microphone is right on the center of the cone, it is going to be the brightest, possibly harshest, brittlest point of the recording maybe exactly what you're going for depending on your speaker and your sound edge of the cone you're going to start getting a bit darker but still quite bright generally that's somewhere around the spot that i'll probably pick but it depends on the sound you're going for further out from the cone you're going to start getting darker now again we can point the microphone on an angle slightly away from the cone but pointing at it to get a bit of the best of both worlds let's say a bit of darkness with uh, a bit of the high end coming in as well. Now you can multi mic these, which I can't remember if I discussed this in the bass guitar, but if you have two microphones, you could place them on your speaker in different spots. You could have different quality mics. So you may have a dynamic mic, which is say the SM57 to give you lots of mid tone on the speaker, but you might put a ribbon mic or 
to give it the darkness and the thickness to add to it and you blend them together. You might put a condenser somewhere to get a lot more sort of top end uh, airy sound. Now with every single one of these approaches the same concepts apply. We're going to load up our tracks, set our inputs, we're going to set our gain controls to the appropriate level for all of them. If we're recording more than one at the same time, whether that's two mics, uh, a direct in, an audio interface, whatever you're recording, obviously set the gain for all of them so that you are getting a good recording without clipping at all times. Now in my case here, one advantage I have that is that with my amp being in the room, if I want to hear the true sound of my microphone or as best as I can without the sound of what's being played in the room coming through, I have some isolation headphones. So you might want to look at investing in those if you want to isolate the sounds coming out of your room out and really listen to what the microphone is playing and allows you to do that while being in the same room. Obviously, if you have your speaker cabinet in a different room or an isolation booth or something like that, then you won't have that problem anyway. Now, one thing I forgot to mention with the audio effects unit is some of those can actually be plugged into your computer via USB and that way they actually act as the audio interface themselves. So you can eliminate the audio interface uh, straight away. You don't even need it, right? So we can plug the audio effects unit in using audio cables into our audio interface or some of them, as I said, we can plug in with a USB cable and it will be the audio interface. Now, if you do that, you obviously need to set your software up to use that audio interface, which is your effects unit, as the input device. And that way you'll get, I guess, the cleaner signal. It'll come straight in. But again, it depends on the quality of the unit and what sound it can generate. But it can be worth a try especially if you don't want to buy an audio interface and you have other, no other need for it and this is purely what you're going to be recording, then definitely worth trying out and seeing what results you get from it. Okay, so in the PDF um, and, and the video course, I've sort of structured it in a way that it has a certain order. Now, the order for recording the instruments is entirely dependent on your song. So even though I've placed each thing in a order in the course, you don't need to follow it that way. And to be honest with you, based on how this song has started off, I will not be following that order. And I'm actually going to be skipping the bass and acoustic guitar and everything and coming straight into my electric guitar because that is the main element. And when I say the electric guitar, it may be multiple parts, okay? so And I might chop and change. The main component is that arpeggio type rhythm component for this song and it's key for all of the other instrumentation. So for me it makes perfect sense to record that next after the drums and get it locked in so that then the other instrumentation can be playing a part with those guitars. Now, I still may come back later and do more electric guitars with leads and things like that as the song develops. And that's what I'm saying. It depends on your song, the order you go with. So, as I said, in my case, I'm going to skip a couple of the chapters and come straight into this electric guitar, and then I'll be going back to doing the other parts later. Now, as for you watching this course, you can obviously watch it through from start to finish and more than likely you may have done that, that is fine, but I'm just telling you that's not exactly the way I recorded it, and depending on your song will depend on how you record it. If the main element in your song is a bass guitar, then that is obviously one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to record. Now, with the electric guitar, there's many ways to record this, and one of the ways is to just plug it directly into your audio interface. And as explained in the Making Connections video and part in the book, we just basically take our guitar cable and we plug it straight into our guitar without dropping it. We plug it straight into our guitar like that. And then we take the other end of the cable right here and we plug it straight into our audio interface. So. Now we have our guitar connected to our audio interface. Pretty simple. 
Okay, so once we've got our guitar plugged into our direct input or high impedance, we need to set up our track. So we're going to add a new track. It's going to be audio and we're going to pick our input. So in my case here, I've actually got it plugged into this DI connection, which is the second input on my uh, audio interface. So I'm going to pick that. It is mono because it is just a single guitar. And we're going to send it to the guitar bus. And we can give it a name, which is like um, E guitar DI, if I could spell DI. We can add it. And we can give it a color if we want. So red in my case. And then we are basically ready to record. Now I'm not going to actually record my guitars this way, but I will give you a sample of what it sounds like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute our rough first because I don't want that. I'll take our cursor back to the start of the song. All right. And we will I'll basically record a part. So as I said, we just need to make sure that our input is set to the appropriate channel, which is DI and our output is set to guitar bus. Okay, so once we've got it plugged in and everything like that, I've got my track set up. What I wanna do first is check on my audio interface, the input. Now, the input here is this one here that says DI. Now, currently it's muted, so we wanna unmute it. And you can see some audios coming through there, so that's good. Now, what we might want to do with this is, you know, increase the gain, which we can do from here. Now, if we go too high, we're obviously going to clip. As you can see there. We don't want to do that, so we want to bring it down to a sensible level. So you might want it there, or you might want to go a little bit lower. It all depends, but if I was playing my part, which is pretty quiet, You know, you might want to boost that gain up a bit to get that impact. Now, obviously, this one here is, as I said, it's pretty quiet, but you can hear how clean it is. All right, it's a very clean sound. It is very raw. It doesn't even have an amp sound because there is no amp. Now, if you have a UAD interface like mine, you have the options to do a few things. I could load, load up a preamp to add a little bit of texture there, or I could even add my amplifier in here. So if I wanted something So if I wanted to add something like a Marshall, I could do that. And we could do that in our, the UAD interface here. But let's assume that you don't have a UAD interface, so you're just talking about setting the gain on your direct in, and you're going to have a very clean sound. So once we've got that set up and it's coming through to our DAW, we want to then have a look at our track. 
Now you can see nothing appears there, but if I put monitor on, you can see now it's coming up. Now if I want to record it just straight clean like that, it's pretty simple. I just have a record enable, click on record. I have my metronome playing, which I should have had, and it starts. And then just stop once you've finished. So now if I play that back, I'll turn the monitor off. Right, so you've got that. Now, what you would normally do in this situation, unless you want it that clean, is you would probably come and load some sort of amp effect, right? So you might come in and let's just say I want to pick Steinberg VST amp rack. And then I might pick a preset here. And I haven't really tried much of these, so but it could be anything. Right, so suddenly we get we're converting our direct signal into an amplifier sound. But you can tweak to your heart's content and change to whatever sound you want. So it could be anything, it could be a clean phaser. So that's one great thing about direct ins is that you can put your processing on after but let's say i wanted to record with that sound because especially if you reamp to let me just add that back if you actually reamp to something that's pretty extreme like a high gain amp or something like that so i have to turn my <laughs> Now, can you hear how awkward that is? Because what I've done, I'll just close that. I've got monitor on, so we're hearing the high gain sound from that. But we're still hearing our clean sound, a DI from the uh, audio interface directly. It's playing out straight away. So this is the direct input sort of sound that we're getting, which is great when you've got an external amp or an external effects, you know, or something like that, because you get no latency. Because not only can you hear that that's clean, but you can hear that they're not exactly tiny. The distorted guitar is slightly out of sync because it's got that latency in the buffer. Now, if we mute that, Okay, now we don't hear the clean sound anymore. So it's still passing it through to our uh, DAW here. And because we've got the monitor on, we're hearing it. So like if I turn the monitor off, there's nothing now. What you'd be hearing is the guitar coming through uh, the mic that I'm talking through. 
that would be as much as it is. Now I'm going to turn this down because I did turn over to humbuckers. And that was started to clip, which we don't want. So if I unmute that, all right, clean sound coming through, mute it. We hear nothing. Now if I put monitor on. Okay, that latency is very annoying to me. So we may want it to reduce the buffer size of this to something a lot lower because that's at 1,024. So let's say we go down to. So that's more reasonable. I could play with that. So let's do the same thing again. So if we say we want to record this part now, we can record with this amp on, but it's not permanent. And I'll show you that in a second. Right, so we have recorded that now. And if I was to play that back. Sounds like what we played. And you would imagine that that is what it recorded, but it's not. Because if I open this up, if I actually turn off this effect or bypass it, and now I play it. That's what we actually recorded. Right, we recorded the direct in sound. So I turn the plug in back on. I don't like that sound. So there you go. So you've got ultimate flexibility in that one. The thing that I don't like about it is some of these effects can sound pretty fake. So you, you can get some great sounding ones, trust me. And look, it doesn't have to be that one there. You could pick anything that you've installed. If you have amplitude, guitar rig, you name it, whatever you've got, you can install it. There's no reason why you can't. So if you wanted to go amplitude, load it up. Obviously, I would turn the other one off. We don't want both. But you could come in and pick uh, some sort of presets. Anyway, 
you get the uh, you get the point there. So that's what you can do with the direct in, right? So very flexible, easy to do, and that's not the way I'm going to be recording my guitars though. But you can obviously do that if you so choose to, and that's what you have available to you. Okay, so the other way we can record this, in my situation at least, is with my Kemper unit. Now, you can imagine that my Kemper is just like an amplifier, right? It's external to the audio interface, external to everything. But it has one slight difference. While I could plug it into a speaker cabinet and record it with mics, I can also plug it directly using uh, XLRs and that sort of stuff into my audio interface. So taking away the need for microphones or cabinets and it emulates cabinets within it. So it records straight into my audio interface. All the sounds are coming from the Kemper, right? So whatever it makes the sound of is what it's gonna record. So you need to remember that. This is not a direct in anymore, right? So if you have a distorted amp sound, that is what it's gonna record and you cannot change it. Okay, it is locked in after you record it. So you wanna get your sound right in this case. That's why I'm saying it's like recording an external amp because that's basically what it is, but without having to use microphones and microphone placement, you can just record it straight in. So it's as simple as plugging your cable into your guitar again and plugging that into the amp unit, my Kemper unit. This Kemper unit is then plugged in from its outputs directly into my audio interface on two channels because it's stereo, right? And each, each input on the audio interface is mono, so it uses two to get the stereo effect. And then we just set up our tracks, or in our case, if you want to record it in stereo, one track with covers two inputs and we record from there. So the first thing we want to do is obviously get our sound right for our Kemper, okay? And we have a sound already because we did it in our demo sort of thing. Okay, so we already have our sound and it's this. And your guitar. Right, so it's a very affected sound. So we've got our sound set up for our amp, right? And this is exactly what we're going to record. Right, so we know that. We're happy with that because once you record it, it is locked in with that. So next we need to set up our tracks and our inputs and everything else. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to set up our tracks. So in this case here, I'm gonna add one audio. And this time we're going to pick this Kemper interface. And this Kemper interface is stereo. Okay, so it's two inputs joined together to be stereo. We're gonna set it to the guitar bus and we'll call it e-guitar. We'll just call it e-guitar one. Okay, so we've got that. We're gonna color code it to red. Now I'm gonna actually duplicate this twice. And there's gonna be a reason for this. Okay, there's still gonna be stereo, but I'm going to probably um, record them clean without the effects. So that gives me some more options around how I pan things and the sort of sound I'm gonna get out of this. We're gonna do one at a time, obviously, and we'll just go from there. Okay, so once we've got our track set up and we've got a guitar in, we've got our sound. 
we want to make sure we've got our gain control set correctly. So in my case here, I'm looking at my track. Now we could go a bit higher with ours because we are doing a lot of picking. So you might decide to wind that up. Now I actually have a Neve set up in this, so we could go a bit higher. All right, I probably wouldn't go any higher than that. So again, control set, I have got the high pass filter on just to roll off any real low end stuff. And yeah, we've got our track ready and we're ready to go. Now, if I was to monitor that, Now it should be right, but what I want to do, uh, I just want to put our buffer size back. I'm going to go to 256 just to be sure. Okay, but I don't want to be monitoring. I want this off. I do not want to hear any audio coming through this. I want to be hearing just what is coming out of my audio interface because it is live. But what I want to also do is I want to be hearing it only through my headphones, right? It's not so critical with electric guitar, but I'd still prefer to only hearing it through. So I would be muting that. So I've got some headphones in headphone, headphone one. So the way I've got it set up now is there's no sound coming through in the room, but it's just coming through in my headphones here, which is my extreme isolation headphones. So they pretty much isolate any noise from the room and I just hear what is coming through here. So I get a true reflection of what is being recorded and what's being played back. Now they're not great quality sound, but it just gives me a great idea of what it's sounding like. Now we wanna make sure that we've got our metronome set on. Now we wanna make sure that our guitar is in tune before we start recording. Right, so we're all tuned up. We're gonna put our headphones on and we're gonna get recording. Obviously put your cable behind your guitar because otherwise that's gonna be really awkward. And we'll record.
So what's happened there, I've discovered that my layout is not 100% correct or doesn't quite fit what I'm playing. So we may have to do some editing there and come back and record either again or do something else there because it just didn't quite line up with the, the, what I was playing with the beats and all that sort of stuff. To give you a true example of what I'm trying to achieve here, what I'll do now is I'll do my other two parts and so you can get a feel for what the sound I'm going for. So I'm gonna go and find a clean sound now without an effect on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'll switch over to my other track and I'll record a pass on the other track and then we'll do another pass on another track. So as you can hear, there's a lot of mistakes there, etc. but it's one take. So let's do the next track.
makes you get a change it up. Because what I should have done, or what I could, not should have, but what I could do is actually change guitars and do this with an entirely different guitar. So I'm going to do that to show you an example of that. So we're going to unplug this guitar. All right, so I've switched over to a Telecaster now. And we'll put it on the neck pickup. What I'm going to do, obviously, is tune. All right, so we are in tune. Let's get our headphones back on. Let's actually see if we've got proper sound. All right, so uh, let's click record and do it again. Right, so you get the idea. Obviously, we've got to do that over and over again for all of our parts and get it all recorded down. Now, I'm going to do that off camera because it's very awkward to do it with all these lights on, getting a lot of noise through the guitar, a lot of hum, hiss, etc. So I'm going to record that. I'm showing you the process. Nothing's going to be any different. This is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get that layout exactly right so that it's 100%. And we're playing it perfectly and we will get it recorded down ready for our other part. So the other part we've got to do is our bridge part, which again is just going to be as simple and I'm going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to do the three tracks, one heavy affected and two clean tracks. And then that will be our entire sort of rhythm electric guitar section done using the Kemper. Now we're going to come back and we're going to do the same thing again with some microphones on an amp to get an entirely different sound again and I'll show you the process of how to do that. <laughs> 